welcome everyone here to this evening and thank you for joining us as we celebrate the life of Deborah Hall. She was definitely a woman of faith. I will, uh, I'll never forget um, working here at the ministry center and the first time I saw her name come across the caller ID and to hear her passion and her heart to believe God for answered prayers was always something. And every day, faithfully, she would call and ask God to do things. And then every week, God was faithful to give her answers as well. And so when I was thinking about what I could say about her in the opening, I come to this passage of Scripture in Mark 11, 22. Jesus says, Have faith in God. He says, For whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed... Be thou cast in the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes those things that he says shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he says. Then the verse 24, this I believe marked my experience with her. What things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. I'm going to tell a, a story. She said, Mark, she, she said, I don't want no sorry service. She said, I want a Pentecostal service. And she said, don't, and Michael told me and reminded me today, he said, don't be afraid to be Pentecostal. So, I don't even know what that is. But, I just thank God for the opportunity to know her. I want to share a story that I think will kind of sum it up. Deborah even believed God could do even the littlest things. She had no problem believing God for big things, but she had no problem believing for little things as well. One day she pulled up in the parking lot and she, she threw the car in park. She comes walking in and she says, Mark, I'm just tired of fooling with this old car. So every time I, I think I got it fixed, something else happens. And I took it to the shop today and said there was, uh, there was nothing they could do. They couldn't find out anything wrong with it. And she said, I know something's wrong with it. And so she put it in park and she parked the car and she said, Mark, let's pray today that God will show me what's wrong with this car so I can tell these mechanics how to fix it. And I said, she's serious. So guess what? We prayed. And we prayed and I said, Lord, I said, let's God show us by revelation. So show us by dream, something, a way that we get this car fixed. So she left. Michael came and picked her up. She comes back the next day driving that car. And she said, Mark, she said, you'll never believe this. She said, I had a dream last night. And she said, I, I saw my car in a garage. And she said, I saw somebody working on it and pulled, when the, the mechanic pulled himself out, she said, I knew it was the Lord. And she said, the Lord spoke to her and said, get down underneath this car with me. I want to show you what's wrong with the vehicle. And she got underneath the vehicle with the Lord and she saw the part that was needed and the part number. You remember this? And she wrote it down on a piece. After she got up from the dream, she wrote down the part number on a piece of paper. And she took it back to the mechanics and she said, this is what's wrong with this vehicle and this is the part number. They got to looking. They started uh, unscrewing some things, moved some things around. Sure enough, that was the part that was missing. And she gave them the exact part number they needed for that car. She was a woman of faith, and she was a woman that God talked to, and I think tonight we just need to, not only, we need to celebrate her life, but more than that, I think that what she would want us to do tonight is honor her life by honoring the God that spoke to her because she was such a woman of faith. So let's just give a hand clap of praise for her life, her faith, her example that she gave to us, and just remember this. What things soever we desire when we pray, believe that we receive them and we shall have them. Would you stand on your feet? And I want you to join Larry and Gina as they sing songs to the Lord. I want us to worship God. And again, I want us to celebrate her life tonight in Jesus' name. Come on, this is only our temporary home. Amen. One day our troubles and trials will soon be over. Some of these days I'm going home 
Where no sorrow ever comes We'll soon be done with troubles and trials Safe from the heartache, pain and care We shall all that glory share We're gonna sit down beside of our Jesus Sit down and rest a little while We'll soon be done with troubles and trials Praise what a day that's going to be. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, Father God, we look forward to the day, Lord, to be in your presence. Awesome, God. But, Lord, while we're here on this earth, we know that you are still God in the good Nobody times and the you, bad, Jesus. Hallelujah. You are not a God created by human hands. You are not a God dependent on any mortal man. You are not a God in need of anything we can give by your plan. That's just the way it is. Yes, Father. You are not a God created by human hands. You are not a God dependent on any mortal man. You are not a God in need of anything we can give by your plan. That's just the way it is. You are God alone from before time began. You are God alone, and right now 
times and bad. You are on your throne. You are God alone. You're the only God. You're the only God whose power none can contend. You're the only God whose name and praise will never end. And you're the only God who's worthy of everything we can give. You are God, and that's just the way it is. You are God alone from before time began. Lord, you are times and bad you are on your throne yes, see it. Yes, you, you are, are God alone. unchangeable you're unchangeable he's unshakable you're times and bad you are on your throne you are God alone you are God alone and from before time began you are on your throne yes you are God alone and right now in the good times and bad Come on, clap your hands to the Lord and give him praise and give him glory and honor. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, it's, it's an honor to celebrate family. And uh, I have the awesome privilege, my wife and I, of pastoring Deborah. David, and uh, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to say it with a pure heart, and I think you'll respect where I'm coming from. Deborah is and was the most different person I think I've ever met, and uh, she and I had a, a bone to pick, so to speak, with each other on a regular occasion. Um, I'm here to read the obituary, but if I could just take just a moment as her pastor and, uh, and just share something with you. There wasn't one Sunday that went by when I would preach and she would make her way to the front at the end of the service to say, Pastor Jamie, that was real good, but it's not quite Dr. Lowry. <laughs> but then she would continue on with her thought and say but I'm telling you that you have an anointing on you that I could see that the nations will be touched and impacted by what God's doing she constantly complimented us and encouraged us Becky to say we believe in your vision David and I believe in what you're doing here in Cleveland and Dwelling Place Church International. And, and uh, I was, Pastor Judy and I had, had a privilege last Wednesday, right before we had to take a flight to Dallas, Texas. And, and I wanted to go by the hospital to see Miss Deborah. 
just before we, we left. And so Pastor Judy and I went, and I was actually there a little earlier in the day. And, and uh, David had stepped out for a few moments, and, and it was just me and Miss Deborah. And she took just a moment to say, I know we've been praying. I know the church has been praying for me. And at that time, as you all know, she was really struggling with, with her oxygen. She was on, on uh, life support and talking very, uh, with a lot of effort just to get one word out. And she began to say, thank you so much for praying. She says, but I want to ask you a question. How is Eli? Eli being a nine-year-old young man in our church who's gone through a major trial and a uh, real tough time for that family. I told her, I said, Deborah, I cannot believe that where you are today on borrowed breath, that you would be caring enough to forget your situation and say, how is Eli? And she says, well, all I can tell you, Pastor, is I've lived my life. But Eli's too young. I've been praying for him, Pastor. And I laid my hand on Deborah as a tear began to come down my face. And, and hers were already watered up. And we began to pray for Eli and together. And that was fulfilling to her. And I've been, I've been driving around today just thinking, what, what would Deborah say right now? I wasn't going to take this long, but let me just say this. What would she sing right now? Sitting where she's sitting or standing where she's standing. What, what would she sing right now? I think she'd change the words to the hymn and say, when you all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing it will be. When you all get to heaven, we will sing and shout the victory. Why can she say it like that? Because tonight that's what she's doing. She can actually say now, well, I'm already here. But when y'all get here, in other words, it's worth the wait. It's worth the trial. It's worth the test. It's worth the hurt. It's worth the pain. And when you all get here, in other words, what I'm seeing and saying and experiencing right now, I want you to know it's going to be worth it all. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise tonight. I believe that. I'm a little jealous tonight. She went through a hard time and fought a tough life. But she is where and she is doing what all of us desire and long to do. It's why I get up in the morning. If I could see Jesus. Deborah Daphne Hall, 54, of Cleveland. A former resident of Mississippi passed away Thursday, April the 5th, 2012. She attended church at Dwelling Place Church International in Cleveland. She was preceded in death by her mother, Shirley Daphne Rain Stanford. A nephew and nephew, Private Barry Wayne Mayo, who was killed in action while serving in Iraq. She is survived by her husband, David Hall, and son, Michael A. Hall, both of Cleveland, Father Thomas Stanford, sister Rebecca Mayo, and husband Alton, and nephew Andy Mayo, all of New Albany, Mississippi. I want to take just a moment just to say thank you so much for attending this special service. It's a big statement, I think, from the family to want to focus on worship and giving God the praise for Deborah's life. And as we proceed, uh, my wife's going to come and then Dr. Lowry's going to come with the message. Let's focus on what the family's asked us to do, and that's Jesus Christ and giving him the highest praise. Yes, amen. And thank God for Deborah Hall's life. God bless you. What a great honor it is to be here today to celebrate Miss Deborah and 
such a, a lady who was so much in love with Jesus and how she loved going to church, how she loved worshiping God. Even in those days whenever her strength was so weak, she would find a way to still worship God. I loved her because uh, there wasn't a service that didn't go by. She wouldn't make it her business to tell me how much she loved me, how much she appreciated me, how much she was praying for me. And she would never know how much that encouraged me. Everybody needs some encouragement, and I'm trying my best to encourage this woman, but she would always find a way to encourage us. Her and David has been such a blessing to our lives, a blessing to our church, and has really poured their hearts out in giving and being there, being a part of everything we did, from Halloween to Christmas to all the things that the church was involved in. They always found a way to come and be involved. My hearts go out to, to you today, David, and your son, and to this great father and this sister today who are grieving. And uh, I appreciate Dr. Lowry so much, Mrs. Lowry, for being here today and to speak over this woman of God that loved this man of God and this woman of God so much. She loved Dr. Lowry. And we didn't mind it at all because we love him too. Glory to God. And so I'm going to sing her song. She told me, she says, now if something happens to me, they told me I've got six months, she said, but if something happens to me, you know what song you're supposed to sing. I said, yes, ma'am. I'll do it with as much as I can. So my voice is really weak. It's almost gone. But I'm going to do this today for Miss Deborah. And I want Jesus to be glorified and lifted up. Praise God.
dry bones becoming as flesh. Yes, it is. And these are the days of the servant day, rebuilding the temple of praise. Come on, let's lift our hands and worship tonight. These are the days of the hearts. The fields are as white in your world. Yes, and we, and we are, are the laborers in your Jehovah. Come on, church. Let's declare that tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Nobody like you. You live. You reign. <laughs> He's alive tonight. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no nobody like Jesus. Pentecostal breakthrough in this place. Deborah was sown in weakness, but she shall be raised in power. Yes. Sown a mortal body, but she shall be raised immortal. Mm -hmm. I want to take a moment to thank all of you for coming here tonight showing your respect and love for one of God's choice servants. I can say that without hesitation or fear of contradiction. Deborah knew the Lord, and that's the greatest thing that a person can possibly obtain and know on this earth is the Lord Jesus Christ. And when she came down, she knew that her time was short 
but she had a joy in her heart that was infectious. It touched you and ministered to you as you walked into that room. I want to thank each one that has had a part in this service. You were especially anointed of God. We must have known that Mark Casto would read from the book of Mark <laughs> tonight. And I'm happy that she told Jamie that he wasn't as far along as I am. <laughs> I don't know if she was talking about our age, but that's the way we're going to interpret it. Today we come to pay a tribute of Christian esteem and honor and gratitude to one of God's good and faithful and dedicated saints. I did not say we have come to pay, to pay a last respect because I do not believe that a friend can pay a last respect to a friend. I do not believe that a husband can pay a last respect to a godly wife. I do not believe that a father or a sister or a son can ever or ever will pay a last respect. to a godly saint as Deborah Hall. Because I believe that our memories will cherish the service and the benefits and the words and the gestures that came from Deborah Hall. And I believe that in the realm of glory and beyond this terrestrial earth upon which we live, that we shall be pleased to recall things that Deborah said to us and did for us. Every month, without fail, as far as I can remember, there was never a month that passed but what I got a check in the mail from Deborah. Sometimes she would write a little note. Sometimes it would just be the check. But I knew the meaning of that check. I knew the meaning of what she would said, what she would say in her letter. Brother Lowry, I am supporting you and what God has called you to do. Stay faithful and be true to the call of God upon your life. Deborah was a unique person uncommon, extraordinary. And I want to say to you, my life has been made better having known Deborah Hall. I say to her family, you can be so thankful and proud of her walk with God and her dedication to the Lord. I want to talk about two things for about two minutes, more or less, here tonight. I want to say to you that life is short. 
I'm 83 years old, but it only seems like yesterday that I was a boy in knee pants riding my tricycle. Life passes so fast. The Bible says that life is like a vapor. When I was growing up, my mother had an old-fashioned wood burning stove and on that stove was an old iron kettle and I would watch it in amazement as the steam would pour out the spout and rise perhaps to the most two feet and then it was gone. That intrigued me. I would sit there every morning and watch the steam come out, but I never really knew that the Bible talked about it. Life is like the vapor. Life is like a flower. You see it today and enjoy its beauty and smell its fragrance, but tomorrow it is cut down and wither and withers and dies. The Bible says that life is like the grass in the field. Today it is beautiful and green, but tomorrow it is cut down and cast into the oven. Life is like a ship docked at the harbor. It moves from the harbor and is lost shortly in the distance as it passes over the horizon. Life is like that. The Bible says that life is like a weaver's shuttle. The weaver's shuttle moves so fast back and forth until you can hardly discern the motion. But life is like that. I don't know if you've ever seen an old-fashioned loom or not, but the shuttle moves so fast. God is talking to us from that weaver's shuttle. Take notice, he is saying, you're not here forever. You're here for a short span of time, and then you will stand before me. While we grieve Deborah's departure today, she is rejoicing around the throne of God with a host of angels. And she is hearing the Lord say, well done, Deborah. You've been faithful over a few things now. I'm going to make you a master over many things. Enter thou into the joys of the Lord. Thank God. If you serve God and live for the Lord when you come to this moment, there is no regrets. There is no pulling back or trying to hold on to life because there's a greater life just ahead. Catherine Booth, that Salvation Army lady, when she lay on her bed, taking her life's breaths, a great crowd had filled the room where she was. She was so respected. She said, folks, the water is rising, but so am I. 
You won't have to worry about dying. Just take notice the way you live and dying will take care of itself. Deborah's life was meaningful. It was spent in the service of the Lord. I read a little story about General Stonewall Jackson. He had to go out of the camp one evening late and when he was coming back in, one of his soldiers accidentally shot him. And when he was laying on the cot, breathing his last, last breaths, he said, I'm going to cross over this river and sit under the tree and rest a little while. Deborah has crossed over the river. She is sitting under the tree, resting in the presence of God. Thank God for his wonderful provision. The Apostle Paul, that grand old apostle that sat in the prison cell and wrote most of our New Testament, said, for me to live is Christ. And to die is gain. He said, if you let me live, I'm going to live for Christ. But if you take my life, that's gain. Because there is an abundant crown of glory that is waiting for me. He said, go ahead and take my life. Do me a favor. Because to die is gain. If a Christian can get his faith around those words, it will transform his life. For him to truly be able to say, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. If for you to live is Christ, then dying is gain. But if you do not live for Christ, dying will not be gain. The Apostle Paul had a revelation as he spoke those words. And he speaks into our hearts so vividly. Balaam was a powerful prophet of God. An unusual man. His influence had spread abroad. They knew that whom Balaam blessed was blessed, and whom Balaam cursed were cursed. So the king tried to employ him to curse Israel so that he could win the battle. But when Balaam stood to give a curse over Israel, he saw Israel blessed and anointed of Almighty God. And instead of cursing them, he blessed them. But finally, he sold his anointing. His eternity with God for promotion and for money. 
Balaam cried out. I don't know when it was in his life, but he said, let me die the death of the righteous and let my last end be like his. But Balaam missed it. He forfeited it all for promotion, for prestige, for money. Life is short. Live every day as if you knew that that was the last day you would live on this earth. Because eternity is long. How do you describe eternity? Old time preachers used to say, suppose the earth was a huge iron ball. Suppose an eagle would swoop down every 100 years and barely touch that earth, scythe small with his beak, and repeat it in another year, hundred years, and another. When the earth had been worn to nothing and had disappeared, eternity would have only just begun. Eternity is long. Never, ever ending. When the world's fair was held in Chicago a number of years ago, they had a congress or a symposium on religion. Various leaders from various different religions of the world were invited to speak to that massive crowd that had gathered for that symposium. The first to speak was a Mohammedan. He talked about the virtues and the blessings and the benefits of his religion. And he sat down and there was a great applause. Following him was a Confucius. He was an eloquent orator. He moves the crowd with the words of intellect talking about the benefits of his religion. When he finished, a Buddhist took the stand and he spoke just as eloquently as the others had about his religion. The beauties, the virtues, the benefits of being a Buddhist. And then it came time for a Christian to talk about his religion. He was a little man, short in stature. He had a high-pitched voice. He was uneducated and not a great speaker. And the crowd was almost petrified Somebody like Joseph Cook 
was going to represent Christianity. They thought it was a perversity that he had been chosen. He walked slowly to the podium, stood up straight, and looked over that massive crowd that had assembled. He didn't talk about the beauty, the virtues of Christianity and how wonderful it is to live a Christian life. But he talked about sin, a subject that was known to everybody as simple. He said it has destroyed nations and Humanity brought pain and sorrow. And when he had finished, he looked at the Mohammedan and he said, Sir, does your religion offer a forgiveness for sin? The Mohammedan had to shake his head and said, No, I'm sorry. And then he cried out to the Confucius and to the Buddhist. He said, what about your religion? Is there any forgiveness for sin offered in your religion? They shook their head. Then with tears streaming down his face, he lifted his voice to the highest point that he could. He said, but thank God my religion offers forgiveness. It doesn't matter how a man or a woman has lived upon this earth and what kind of mess they've made out of their lives. There is forgiveness through the blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And he walked over and sat down, and they applauded and applauded, and the applause shook the place where they were assembled. He had won the day. Thank God there is forgiveness of our sins and all of us can stand before him justified and redeemed through his grace yes. and by his power. At the cross there is pardon and there is mercy for every man or woman that will kneel before him and confess him as Lord and Savior. Would you stand, please? And I want everybody in the room to come around and stand as close to Deborah as you can. Lord, let Deborah see what is taking place now. Jesus name praise the name of the living triumphant Lord of glory our soon coming King I want to say to every one of you standing here you'll see Deborah again this is not the last view of her that you will have. Suddenly the memories of this saint of God will not be wiped out of your mind. But they'll live in a very vivid and pronounced way in your life. Thank you, Deborah, for living for God.
trusting God for all the good things, the wonderful deeds that you have done, for going to church when you didn't feel like going, worshiping God, glorifying his wonderful name, and honoring his house by going to the house of God. Thank you, Deborah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come now to the conclusion of this memorial service and the saints, the believers, the loved ones and friends have come together here today out of respect and love for a life well lived. Lord, never in my lifetime will I forget the days and the nights that she called my office and my home for prayer. I'll never forget the prayers that we prayed for Deborah and her faith that took hold of those prayers and received blessing from God. I pray that you will transfer to each of us the faith, the love, the concern that possessed her life to each one of us that we may live nobly and righteously and godly in this present life. And when we come down to the moment when we are to pass over Jordan, that the Lord will stretch out his hand and help us to step on the king's ferry boat and go sailing home to meet with Jesus. Bless your people today. Put your arms around each one. Breathe into their spirits a special anointing of your power. Draw us all closer to you. Oh God, I pray that a double portion of your power and spirit will be released upon each person in this room today. We thank you and honor you and love you in Jesus' name.